Okay, the first thing you should do is you should open up the key to section 5.2 homework and check your answers against it and see how you did. All right, uh, prepare any questions for me on that homework when I get back uh, tomorrow and I'll deal with it, okay? Now you do have more homework. Uh, the homework is gonna be, you actually will have time to work on it in class because it's very short notes. Uh, you can probably finish it in class and upload it. And then there's also gonna be a practice quiz handout. Now the real quiz will be um, first class next week. Uh, you guys are D-block, so it's gonna be Monday. Now, we're gonna talk about density. So we've already talked about significant figures. We've talked about um, uncertainty. We've talked about uh, error in you know, measurement. Uh, we've talked about um, scientific notation and units. Uh, so anyway, now we're going to talk about density and how to measure it. Um, so the question is, do gases have different densities? So for instance, if you have an, a mixture of uh, air, which is nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, that's virtually 100% uh, of what is in air, versus say pure carbon dioxide gas, which one, uh, are, are they different in density? Uh, I don't know. Well, let's think about it for a minute. You don't know a lot about density. Density is, uh, as you'll see, is the weight per unit mass. Uh, sorry, mass per unit volume. I apologize for that. Um, so you'll, you'll see uh, that they are all made of different compounds, and so they'll have different um, densities. So carbon dioxide gas is more dense. Bubbles will float. So for those of you in D-Block who didn't get to see this, I uh, videoed it for you. So take a quick look. So if you were to blow those bubbles and put them on uh, outside of the tank, the tank is filled with carbon dioxide gas. They'll float inside the tank, but outside they just go straight to the ground because the bubble is more dense than air, where the bubbles are less dense than carbon dioxide. So it's pretty cool. Okay, let's get back to the main thread here. So yes, gases um, have density, and they have different densities, just like every substance in the universe has a different or a unique density. So again, what is it? Density is mass of a substance per unit volume. It's usually given in the units of grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. Now remember from units, a milliliter is the same volume as a cubic centimeter. Sometimes we'll have them in different units, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Just remember, a cubic centimeter is one milliliter of volume. And there is this handy general equation. Density is mass per unit volume. That's what the equation is. So just remember that and that'll help you solve things. Now, every substance has a unique density. So density is a physical property of a substance. Every substance has its own density. So take a look, everything, gases, liquids, solids, all have different densities, okay? Take a look, you can see gases have extremely small densities. Liquids are a little bit more in the middle, except for mercury, which is very dense. And solids tend to be more dense in general than liquids. Now, if you remember the trough of fire, I poured something down that aluminum a uh, piece of, of, well, I call it a trough, but it's just a piece of aluminum flashing that's bent into a V shape. It poured down the V to hit the candle. That thing was hexane gas. I told you that it poured down because it kind of acts a little bit like a liquid. Um, you could actually pour gases. And the other thing is, is that it is denser than air. So air is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. Oxygen is more dense than nitrogen. You can see that the density of hexane gas is greater than oxygen. So the density of hexane gas is greater than the mixture, the density of a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, and argon. So that's why it poured. So that's why it went down the trough and hit the candle. Now, how do we measure density? Pretty easy, okay? Mass is easy to measure. We have nice, accurate electronic balances. Um, as long as you've got a 
small enough mass that the balance isn't maxed out, you can very easily measure it. Now, volume can be tricky. Now, regular shapes are easy. Now, I'm not giving you formulas here, but you know, like a cube or a rectangle, you multiply length times width times height. Okay, for you know a sphere, it's uh, four thirds pi r cubed. Um, those are things that you can look up. Okay, those are you know things you can just Google. You can find out the how to find the volume of a regular shape. What if you have an irregular shape? So there is this story about this guy named Archimedes. So he's a Greek mathematician, and there was a king that was had a crown made for him. And it was supposed to be a golden crown. And so the king, though, suspected that the goldsmith had substituted in some other metals and made it as a mixture. So the question is, how could he figure out whether or not the crown was made out of gold or made out of a mixture of different metals? Well, every metal has a different density. And this guy figured it out that all he had to do was figure out the density of gold and then figure out the volume of the crown. And if he knows the volume of the crown and he knows the density of the gold that it's supposed to be made out of, he'll know how much it should weigh. So he took the crown, put it in a, basically a container of water and used what's called displacement to figure it out. And once he figured out how to do that, he supposedly shouted Eureka because he figured out how to find the actual density and mass and everything needed to prove whether or not this crown was made out of gold. So any irregular shaped object, you can determine its volume by the displacement of water. As an example, people are pretty irregularly shaped. And so if you have a container with water in it, you could jump in, immerse yourself, and as long as you know markings on the side that show um, what the volume difference is, you will then know your own volume. Now that is used to determine body mass index, BMI. Um, there's easier or simpler ways which are less accurate to calculate it, but it gives um, people who are into like exercise physiology uh, and other you know things health that are health related, they can use that as a way of very accurately determining your body mass index. This is basically what um, Archimedes did with the crown. He just, you know, dropped it into a container, figured out its volume, knew how much gold was supposed to weigh, so now he knew the volume of it, how much gold was supposed to weigh, masked the crown, and then found out that indeed the crown was not made of gold. Now, what are we going to do next? The notes here were very short, okay? So, what you're going to do is you're going to pull out the homework. Now, Mr. Conklin, who's subbing for me today, will hand this out to you. So you'll have uh, four questions on density. So you need to answer these four questions accurately, okay? Make sure you show your work, shouldn't be a problem. And then what you're gonna do is take a picture and upload them. So if you do this in class and just, you know, efficiently, you shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever um, getting your homework done in class. Now the other thing Mr. Conklin is gonna do is he's gonna hand out a practice quiz We've had um, three classes on units and measurement. So it's a small unit. It's like, call it a half unit. Um, you are gonna take a quiz on the first class next week, which for D-Block is Monday. Here is a practice quiz. It covers significant figures, all sorts of stuff with scientific notation, how to add and subtract, multiply and divide numbers, and come up with the right values, a little bit about density, and then it also has a question about um, what would be the density of this irregularly shaped object. So you're going to need to go through and figure that out. Uh, you won't get the answers until I'm back, which is going to be the fourth class this week. And then we can go over them in class. Your real quiz on Monday is going to be very similar to this. So take this seriously. You're getting it enough time ahead of time that you can work on it. This is something you might consider or should do tonight, which is Wednesday night, so that you'll have it for your next class. All right, and that is it.